Hey, Mark here. Thought uh, it was about time to do a little comparison with our grafted tomato plants. Uh, it's been quite a while. They got off to kind of a slow start. Both of them, uh, grafted and ungra ungrafted, uh, held pretty steady together for a while, but all of a sudden uh, started taking off. And apparently, I think uh, the grafted ones are doing better than the ungrafted. Uh, take a close look at them. Right here on this row here, we got the grafted ones. Right next to them on this row here are the ungrafted. First one we got here is the Soldaki, grafted, ungrafted. Next one is Belgium Giant, grafted and ungrafted. And we've got the Tigerella, the Red Zebra, a grafted, ungrafted, and Moonglow, grafted, ungrafted. And then the last one that we got grafted was the Sicilian Rosa. So let's take a little closer look at these and see what you think. Okay, it might be a little bit hard to tell on this, but you can already see this first one here, the Soldaki. The one on our left side is the ungrafted. The one on the right side there is the grafted. And you can see they're already towering over the ungrafted ones. Same with the uh, giant Belgiums. They're a little bit higher. Uh, the rest of them are about the same height. And uh, to try to get a closer look at the plants themselves, Here's the grafted one, and here's the ungrafted one. So, first set here, the Soldaki, you can see it's pretty obvious that the uh, grafted one, the plant itself, is doing better. The ungrafted one here isn't doing too bad. Got some nice tomatoes on there once they get going. A lot more tomatoes it looks like on the grafted. Uh, same with the uh, giant Belgium. Ungrafted, the plant's looking a little bit weaker. I keep the bottom leaves cleaned off as they become diseased. Pretty hard to keep that from happening. And then uh, here's the giant Belgium, the grafted one. You can see in there. Our weather hasn't really been conducive to tomato set. Uh, tomatoes don't like it when it gets above, I believe it's 85 degrees days. And I forget the nighttime temperature, but uh, 85, they don't wanna, they don't wanna set. Don't wanna pollinate. Here's the Tigerella. Getting a few ripe, finally get some ripe ones on there. Here's the ungrafted. There's the grafted one. And Moon Glow, this is a really nice one if you want a nice orangish tomato. Here's the ungrafted. And you can hopefully tell from the videos here. There's the grafted one, how much denser the grafted tomatoes seem to be. Uh, these seem to be a little bit more uh, resistant to the leaves diseased. Uh, holding up better. This is a new one back here for me, the Sicilian Rosa. And these two plants look pretty, pretty comparable. I think the uh, grafted is doing a little bit better. And this one here. Grafts are holding really good. Right here is where it was grafted. Here's the rootstock from my tomato that I grafted to. Here's here's the here's the other plant and uh, the sodaki. So those are all looking pretty good. Got a few other tomatoes over here. We didn't uh, graft at all. I got here's my Martino's Roma. This plant here ain't doing so good, I don't know why. That one there in the cage is doing a lot better. And here's one of my all-time favorites. This is the Moskvich. This is ungrafted. This is a, I believe this is more of a determinant type tomato. I don't know, it acts both ways sometimes. Indeterminate or determinant. 
Uh, getting some ripe ones. This is supposed to be a Siberian type. It's a little bit earlier. And this one's an ungrafted. That's Sweet 100s. Cherry tomato. And back of that, this is one I call a voluntary grape tomato. I've been saving these seeds over the last few years. I only grew one grape once way up in the front of the garden and uh, didn't do too well. And then every now and then I leave some of these come back just when they're coming up. I just let them go and see what I get. That's what I got. Here's an interesting tomato. This is supposed to be black cherry. I got one of these from the farmer's market last year. And the name they gave me was different and I looked that up and it was just a red cherry tomato. It had nothing to do with this. They're actually a dark purple color. This one is doing, the plant itself isn't real lush, but it's got a lot of tomatoes on it. And I've noticed this one has hardly any problems with picking up any of the Fusarium wilt or those other things that tomato plants tend to get on their leaves. A little bit showing up down there. And uh, I'll show you a nice big bunch of these. Looks pretty good, huh? They're dark on the side that the sun is hitting. And um, they'll turn red. These aren't right yeah, just because they're dark, but you can see the bottoms are more green where the sun isn't hitting. Uh, should be interesting. Okay. And a few odds and ends here. There's my ground cherries growing. I believe those probably related to tomatoes. They started out as such tiny little plants, and now look at them. <clears throat> it's going like crazy. Uh, this one here, this one I got set out away from the garden. I just <clears throat> made this little bed this spring. Bought a couple of three columnar apples, apple trees. I tried growing them. And uh, this one's supposed to be a jelly bean, but I'll tell you, I've never seen no jelly beans get that big. So anyway, that one, kind of a monster plant, grew pretty good. Here's another bed I started this year. And, uh, I had some new raspberries, we're going to try growing raspberries in here. But when I put my mulch around them, compost and whatnot, I always have some tomatoes different seeds growing and things and here's a nice big tomato plant. It's got the potato leaf on it so I'm not sure which one it is. It could be the Soldaki or uh, could be Giant Belgium I guess. Anyway, just uh, I didn't stake that one up. It looks pretty healthy. I'm going to leave that one alone. And we got another one down here and we're just going to leave those grow and see what we get. I like doing that if I got the room and they're not in the way. Well, here's another member of the tomato family. This is a tomatillas. Four of these plants planted in here. Got them in uh, tomato cages. Description on these say they're low, lying, and spreading. These babies ought to really spread out, but they uh, get pretty tall. I'm about six foot, and we got a, about a six inch raised bed here. Get up on here, you can see. Well, they're about six feet tall interesting plant. Oh, what they do, husk tomatoes some people call them. Uh, personally I think they're kind of bland and useless, but uh, they like to use them in salsa. They grow these little husks, these big husks, this one's pretty good sized, and inside of there would be a tomato-like fruit that grows. Fills that up, and the uh, husk will dry up, split open, and that's when they're ready. So, looks like the wife's got some plans for making some salsa. We'll find out. This is all tomato plant uh, related plants.
uh, tomato plants, peppers, uh, ground cherries, these here, uh, tomatillas, they're all related through the uh, nightshade family.